I'm Elizabeth Gearhart. I'm here with Mark Cantor. Hi. So, <laughs> so you may have seen Flash Player on your computer. Mark invented the tool that became Flash, and now he's got something new that is extremely cool that he is going to show you and talk about. Hey, Mark. Awesome. awesome. Howdy. Hey. So you want me just to explain what we're doing? Yeah. Tell us what you Okay. Got. Well, some of you might have heard of TikTok. Some of you might have heard of Instagram. And I see that as the next generation of what, where we've come from all the way from the 80s. So there was a thing called blogging. Then there was a thing called YouTube. Then there was a thing called Snapchat, which led to Instagram, which led to TikTok. So the question is, what comes after TikTok? Okay. Uh, Elizabeth, have you ever wondered about what comes after TikTok? Um, I'm just kind of trying to keep up, but I've heard Instagram's trying to do something. But what I've, yeah, they I do. They have something called Reels. Yeah. And that is the copycat of TikTok. So you see, in my industry, people copy each other freely. Sometimes there's a lawsuit. In fact, Oracle and Google are arguing in front of the Supreme Court as we speak. So sometimes it turns into lawsuits, but most of the time it isn't. Instagram stone cold ripped off Snap and they never sued them. Yeah, you know, whatever. It's 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 just how things go. Now, but the key thing that's underlying this culture, which is a youth-oriented culture, I'm sure I don't have to tell anybody that, is FOMO, fear of missing out. What's the next big thing? So software guys like me, we're constantly looking for what's the next big thing because that's how we make it. So back 35 years ago, the next big thing was something called multimedia with photos and videos and animation and text, and you can make it interactive. You can put a little triangle down at the bottom of the screen. People would tap on it. You go to the next screen. At some point, that was completely new. Uh -huh. So 35 years later, we're doing the same thing for AI. Because AI is completely new. People want to participate in it, but yet you have to be either a data scientist or a mathematician or a programmer. So one of the things that Instigate is about is giving people an entrance ramp, a way to start to learn about AI, and you learn by doing, right? So, okay, so that's the first part of, of Instigate. The second part of Instigate is that it's a, a next way to express yourself. Like I said, what comes after TikTok? So if you can imagine taking photos and videos and all the things that make up an Instagram or TikTok and then adding interactivity to it, so the whole thing is presented like a conversation. And so I share this with you and then you get it. And you, at the bottom of the screen, you can type in questions, just like you're in the middle of a, a conversation. But the conversation is a story and the story has been scripted out specifically by your friend, the, your, the creator. So our social model is that the creator creates a story shares it privately with somebody. And then eventually, if that creator wants to push it onto a live timeline in public, they can do that as well. That's really powerful. That I mean, all of it's really powerful and very cool. But I could see how a marketing person would take this and try it a few different places with a few different focus groups or whomever and pick the one they really like and then push that out on social media. So that could be huge. Yeah, and it's specifically designed for celebs and brands because what you can do, like for instance, the way people learned about HTML was they went up to their browser and they opened up the page and they saw the source code that was the HTML. And that's how you learned HTML. So in our case, you can go to, and we call these things beings. We don't call them bots because bots are evil. <laughs> so you can go to a being, you can open it up and you can see the script that was used to build the being. Now, what celebs and brands want to do is they want to get their message out there as far as possible. So when they build a being, they'll have a theme song and a bass line and some lyrics and a video and photos. And, and you can open it up and see all those elements, copy the one that you like, and then paste it into your being. And then you go over to Tesla and grab the car going around the corner. And then you go over to Procter & Gamble. You get the dancing cereal box. You know, you go to Beyonce or whatever, or Nike. And you go into these beings and you grab the pieces that you like and put it into your being. Now, the celebs and brands love that because there's stuff spreading around. And meanwhile, you've got a whole new way to remix and do something totally new. And then you can make it interactive. Because, see, you don't want the company 
to have your bot reply about your tech support or health advice. You want to have the bot, the being, say what you are thinking about. That teacher in school you all hate, the movie you saw last week, the lyrics to this new song, that cute guy. Uh, you know, like you call your friends nicknames and you have your own kind of language. And so this being that you're creating is going to only say what you want her to say. And that's all part of the story that you're sharing with your friends. So let me get this part straight, though. So the being may compose content itself, but it composes a content based on your personality that you've put into it. Not, not automatically. You're okay. being trained how to learn how to do AI. So you got to work your way up from the bottom up. Every sentence, every utterance, everything that you want the being to say, you have to define. Uh -huh. You have to put a lot of work and effort into it. And so that means you have to keep coming back, which means we have to design the product to be viral so that you want to come back to kind of trigger your aspirational ambitions. So why don't you let me show you the product and maybe that'll uh, speak for itself, okay? Okay, so here we are, it's called Instigate and currently it's only running in um, Android. And because we're running on Zoom, it's not quite perfect, but let me just give you a story, a quick story, a story about telling stories. Now, can you hear that audio? I can. Okay. Let me tell you a story about telling stories. That's what Instigate is all about. You see how it says, say something at the bottom? So I can type in anything and ask a question, or I can just go to the so next part of the story. I had about telling a story about making a burrito with an instigate beating. Now I'm using the background music of so the Jimi Hendrix and Woodstock, you know. Making burritos. Well, needless to say, So this is all homebrew, right? You do this yourself on your smartphone. That's the whole point. So I went down to Chipotle and I went to show people me going to Chipotle. And it was only at that very moment when I'm recording and I went, oops, they're not going to let me record. Here's another one for you. Have you ever thought about the fact that software is the new rock and roll? That we take our heroes, we put them up on pedestals, we pray to the altar of fame. No, Jimmy Hendrix did not worry about making money. Okay, so now we go into a whole other section. And I can use photos now and background music. And I can also use narration. Muhammad Ali took fame and turned it into his spear, his machine gun, to go off and create great change. Right, so I can combine <laughs> photos and videos and music and, and you know anything I want. And you're supposed to recognize Michael Jackson or Freddie Mercury, or of course dates you. And then you're supposed to recognize Jimi Hendrix with Janis Joplin, which even fits you more. Because of the pressure of the expectations and you know money. So then I continue to tell my story the way I want to tell it. Collaborated with Prince or Sid Vicious. Okay, so now let's take this rock and roll ethos and apply it to the software industry. See, this is our hero. Modern day, modern era, Steve Jobs is the hero. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I love that old monitor. <laughs> right. So we go and continue to tell the story, and that'll give you some idea of what the product is. Now, what I can do at any time, I can go in and stop the story, and I can go in and, and see the script. Oops, I lost the share. Okay, anyway, um, oh, it won't even shut up. It keeps going. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so that's, that means the software is still in progress, and it's, it's buggy. Okay. So, but at any time, I could have gone and opened up one of those stories and shown you the script of how it's constructed. And so that's the uh, third part of the product is that it's very easy to use and that monetization, the ability for someone to make money is built into the product. So anybody can come along and learn how to use the product and then celebs and brands and other people will come in and hire them. 
So there'll be a marketplace and you'll be able to show off your soundtrack, or your music or your animations. You'll you know, have your editing skills and then you'll eventually learn over time how to build conversations and, and where the, the being is trained to react and answer. That takes time, that takes a lot of investment. And what you do is you work your way up to the product, just like you work your way up to levels in a video game. You'll learn more and more concepts of AI, okay, which, and more features, right? Because you don't want to bombard them. Uh, gamers know what I'm talking about. Like you work your way up and at each level, additional features appear, new concepts, you're capable of doing new things. And that of course expands your range of your knowledge so, you, so people pay you money for your knowledge. So it really is next generation TikTok. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the point. Yeah, and, and by the way, there's intelligence in it. And so there's a help agents that come up and ask, uh, sh show you how to use the product. You could then ask them questions. And so the whole thing has got like about 15 different kinds of AI all wrapped in it. And as far as going in and seeing code and copying it, I mean, kids are learning to code in school today. They're learning it in third grade. So that's not going to be a barrier for them, right? Well, hold on. There's going to be a line in the sand here. The line in the sand is programming, right? So you're not programming in the sense of what being a programmer is. There's a saying in the industry today, they're called low code, no code, or you could just say non-programming. So all you got to do is like you go into, you open up a being and you hit plus, and the plus comes up and says, well, what do you want to add? Photo, video, whatever. Okay. And you add it. So kids know how to do that instinctively. Mm -hmm. And if you want to copy and paste, you go select something, you open it up, and there's a button that says copy. So you hit copy, and then you copy it. You know, so it's all really straightforward. It's not programming at all. So uh like literally a 10-year-old could learn how to do it. So who do you see using this? Who are the early adopters for this? There's three kind of users who are going to use it. Okay. One are pure creators. I don't know if you know that the most enviable job on the planet Earth today is to become an instant uh, internet influencer. Oh, yes. <laughs> so there are a lot of people, who are like millions of people who want to just go off and express themselves. Mm -hmm. We used to call them bloggers. Sometimes you might call them a citizen journalist or an artist or what a creator, but it's that's a whole category of user. A second category of user is someone who is, again, wants to make money and they don't really care. They're building websites, they're writing ad copy, they're doing SEO optimization, they're interviewing people for video databases. I mean, you know, like there's all these jobs out there where people want to make money in social media. Okay, that's the second category of user. And then the third category of user is someone who, when they went to tech support and they saw how this bot could answer questions and they went and ordered pizza and went to an online e-commerce and then heard about digital health advice and they're wondering, like, how does that work? This AI stuff is amazing. I want to do AI when I grow up. Well, how do you start? Where, where's the entrance ramp? How do you possibly get involved with this industry, which is going to involve every aspect of our life, mm -hmm. every aspect of society, and every industry there is. So AI is a common thing that as we move forward in life and in society, you're going to want to know about. Well, how do you learn? How do you, how do, you do that? And mm -hmm. so we're an entrance ramp for those who want to learn about AI. Excellent. So if it, um, a celebrity wanted to use this, would they hire the second tier person who would they, they probably well, it's, it's going to be on a slub by slub basis so, so let me kind of map out three levels just since you asked the question an advanced celeb has his own in-house crew right they're posting the instagram and thing they're making tiktoks they're doing video production they do audio they have programming they have a wide range of skills basically a digital agency okay? mm -hmm. so that team is going to discover our product get the product, produce their own beings, and they're going to then want to convince their boss, hey, we can license an entire, what's called an instance. The business model is called white label. They can get an entire copy of the system and brand it for themselves. 100% their content, okay? So they can just go crazy, okay? Now, a mid-level kind of a brand, uh, celeb, 
they hear about it, but like you said, uh, they, uh, they don't have the in-house expertise. So they've got to go find somebody and probably it's going to be an agency uh, <laughs> that is an expert at Instigate and then agency will then build them a brand. And again, they get to choose to take their being and go onto our timeline and get discovered along with anybody else, or they can go and maybe join a consortium Let's say you're into makeup or travel or sports. There might be a whole cluster of beings around sports or makeup or gaming or history or dogs or like, you know, any affinity. And they could then put out this, uh, participate in this consortium of beings. Okay. Now, what I'd like to think, because celebs, I mean, well, how did you become famous? Well, there's some reason why. And so you've got a story to tell. What I'd like to think is that every celeb will just discover the product themselves and they'll just use it themselves. Oh my, imagine that, that they then take their creativity and apply it using our tool. They've got the videos, they've got the stories, they've got the music. Now put it together in a new way, like what happens when it's better than TikTok, which gives me more control, it gives me more power. So yeah, I imagine celebs themselves will be able to use the product. So I imagine, though, that you could create a lot of jobs with this. So if you get instigate AI experts who yeah. maybe approach, say, a Damon John, who's an entrepreneur, so he's open to new things, right? Exactly, exactly. And just like do a, a one minute long thing of a comp comp compilation of his work and say, look what I could do for you, Damon, on this exactly. brand platform. Just like you'd pitch any new client. Right. So if somebody learned instigate AI really well and learned how to put things together creatively, which a lot of social media people like to do. It would be like being yeah. an Instagram expert or- It's like discovering PowerPoint for the first time, <laughs> right? It's like, oh my God, I could do this and then I could do that and then I could do that, you know? It's like, yeah. And so, and by the way, let's not forget, it started with Snap and then Instagram copied it and then Facebook put it in and then they just announced that LinkedIn is gonna have it and YouTube is gonna have it. like. So this this storytelling thing, which you and I technically, we could call that a slideshow, right? It's like video and photo, and there's some words, and it, like, you know, it's a sequence. We just call it a slideshow, whatever you want to call it. Um, so now the question is, but wait a minute, I'm used to this kind of vertical thing where there's it's a text field at the bottom, right? You don't have to explain to anybody what that is, and so what happens if I type in here? So remember that chatbots are supposed to follow the rules of grammar mm -hmm. they're supposed to be cognitively comprehensible and they're pretty much about facts right. well, what happens if you let crazy artists loose they don't have to follow the rules of grammar it's certainly not about facts it certainly could be fiction go for it have fun so you know i i, I should tell you that one of the secrets about my first company was that we didn't invent multimedia presentation, scientific visualization, courseware, uh, product simulations, all those things were invented by our customers. We were just the guys that made the screwdriver or the hammer, right? We're just the toolsmiths. So that's ultimately my role. I'm actually having to create the sample beings and to show people like tutorials and things, what to do. But it's gonna take at least a year or two because we're not done yet, right? It's right. gonna take a year or two. And then getting into the hands of the creators and they show us what's good. Historical figures, animals, you know, battles and festivals, upcoming movies, uh, like any kind of story you wanna tell. And then like, what kind of questions would people ask? And the art form is the creator anticipating what's the question, because then you have the answer, right? So like when you're doing tech support for a particular product, you know the answers. When you're trying to order pizza, you know the answers. When you're trying to order shoes, you know the answers. But what does it mean to know the answers for any kind of creative expression? Well, yeah, I don't know, maybe the theme or maybe what you're saying in the contents creates the questions. Right. So like, it's like you're formulating and instigating a conversation. So that's where the term instigate comes from. Well, this is fabulous. I could see all sorts of uses for it. I, and I could and I'm thinking this video is going to be worth something because I'm having fun. <laughs> I am too. I mean, I love seeing new technology and this is, this is amazing. And it is, it does seem like you've kind of 
taken, okay, this is what we've already done, but how can we make something completely new, but that people will use because it's not so far removed from what people are already doing, right? Right, because on one side, they have, they have to recognize something and has to trigger something on their inside. But the way I looked at it was I was watching my kids create Instagram and Snapchats, and it's very simplistic products. It's designed to only do a few things, do it well, but that's all it does. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a whole industry of these other products that kids use ahead of time, what we call upstream, and they create a special effect or something, and then they drop that into an Instagram video. So, but at the end of the day, what this is, is fairly condescending. It limits the creativity of people to keep it simple. So if you throw that out and you say, I'm going to be disruptive and I'm not going to be concerned with making a sophisticated advanced tool. Ever heard of Photoshop? How about video editing, right? I mean, these, all these things are advanced tools that we would never think, well, why do you need to go? You know, I mean, you need that, that capability. It makes the product harder to use. But once you learn that, you've got the power. Okay. So now, so then I say, okay, so this is where I want to go. Well, that's level seven. Uh, what's level six? What's level five? And then shrink it all the way down. Well, what's level one? What's the bare minimum that we can release with? And that's what we'll have out in public, you know, around Thanksgiving. That is awesome. So is it just for the phone or can you put it on your computer? We eventually will, not now. And uh, in fact, to tell you the truth, as of October 13th, we're still only Android. So our goal is to get it to work on iOS and have that out by Thanksgiving. And by the way, we've raised zero money. So there's actually three reasons why we want to get out this prototype. One is to create a there there, to show that something new. Two, to show investors, look, if we created all this with no money, just imagine what we could do with money, right? And then number three is that we sincerely believe in this thing that it's going to be our customers, our users, who are going to define what the product is. And so now we get to listen, to listen to the feedback and the requests. This is exactly what I was doing 35 years ago. We used to send our programmers into the booth at Macworld and the customers would come up and they'd request a feature. And the programmer would go up to his hotel room, add the feature and come back the next day. Awesome. That's how, that's how we used to do it in the old days, right? Okay. So, so it's very important for us to get the product into the user's hands, the creator's hands, and then they'll start asking for things. So is there a charge for the app? No. It's free. No, because the celebs and brands are going to die. They're going to so want to participate and play. And by the way, we don't necessarily even charge the celebs or brands for the app. It's when they want, they're going to start asking us for something, for something special. Well, we'll charge them a little bit. In the perfect world, they would only pay for something that works. Right. So there's no such thing as an ad campaign and you pay me money up front and I'm guaranteed. I only want to accept money if the product is working. Okay. That's the perfect relationship with a, with a customer. Right. So do you think there will be, will there always be a free level, do you think? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So not, a, not a free level. The entire product's free. And okay. you'll, you'll be able to go all the way to the point where you could take your being and you could push it publicly for the rest of the world. But at that point, now you've invested maybe a hundred hours, 200 hours, you've invested time and energy, no different than building up a library of YouTube videos, right? So right. once you've invested the time and energy, you wanna protect that investment. You wanna make sure, for, let me give you an example. Along comes a bad influence, one of those alt-right negative people. You know, they're talking about QAnon and this crazy shit. And they come along and they put influence into your being, right? Yeah. Well, don't you want to go and be able to prune out the negativity and literally just pluck it right out? Yes. Well, for that, maybe I'll charge you five bucks a month. Yeah, it's all like that. reputation management at that point. Exactly, exactly. And so again, I think they call it shared value transactions. Okay, so if you, right. if, if it's a win-win for everybody and I make a little bit of money. And by the way, you probably want me to make some money so we can stay alive, right? I mean, you know, it, it's incumbent upon you to be nice to me if you like it. If you don't, go go do something else, you know. So, so, so people on there, can, can I get it on my Droid right now? I have a Droid phone. 
or do I have to wait? Uh, well, we're still, yeah, we're still pre-launching. So like I said, around Thanksgiving, we'll be able to. So Thanksgiving, uh, I should get it on my Droid and you can get it on your Apple phone too? Yes, that's the goal, yeah. So that's not that far away. Not at all. I'm, as soon as I hang up, I'm going back to more testing and building new things. And I'm working on a, a being right now about Babe Ruth. Oh, that's exciting. That'll be yeah, it is. Because well, let me test out this for you. Do you know of the controversy regarding Babe Ruth and a candy bar? I do. I know all about it. Okay, so that'll be a hidden Easter egg. Right. So I'll present the story of Babe Ruth and I'll say, do you know the story? And then if you say yes, up will come one video, which will verify the Curtis Candy Bar lawsuit. And if you say no, I'll have a video that tells the whole story of the Curtis Candy Bar lawsuit. And then later on, if you type in Baby Ruth, up come a shot of Grover Cleveland's daughter who died in 1904. You know, it's, it's, it's a but it's a, it makes the story interactive. That is pretty cool. It's like yeah. getting to choose the ending on the movie. Almost. And that, that'll just be level three, right? So you don't get to do multiple endings in level one, right? <laughs> so you work your way up and interactive branching, you know, fork in the road, three doors, you know, like all those kind of things. Those are the features I'm talking about, a concept called backstory. So you could give a backstory on your dog this is my dog's mother, and this is where my dog was raised. You can invent anything, and then later on, that backstory is used in the conversation. Well, my mom used to say, well, back in the day when I was born over here, that, and so the being's just out there talking, like, you're going, well, where did this come from? And that was all, of course, created by the creator. I am going to look for this at Thanksgiving, and it, certainly at the holidays, I'm going to show my kids who are in their 20s, that, and I'm hoping for that. So our go to market is that a lot of people know me back in the day and I help create their careers. And so the perfect scenario, because like I'd like to say that as director was to multimedia, so will instigate be to AI. So the, go, the perfect go to market is that people of our generation find out about it and then they tell their kids because yeah. their kids are like this. Dad, leave me alone. I'm busy right now. You know, and so we're looking for any kind of way to do an intergenerational connection with our kids, if it could be via our product, even better. Awesome. So is there anything else you want to say about it in this video? We can do another one after you launch, if you'd like. Oh, no, no, no. We're, let's, uh, let's keep it short and succinct because people only have a certain amount of tolerance for, for watching videos. Right. So thank you, Mark. I'm excited to get this on my phone at Thanksgiving. Thank you.